Well, new calls for Washington Commanders owner Dan Snyder to sell the team. The news coming in an explosive new Washington Post report today. Now NFL owners are saying he has to go. It is the latest setback in a long list for the Washington Commanders owner. Will his billionaire peers vote out one of their own? Our story. Thank you so much for joining us today. Dan Snyder bought the Washington Commanders, then known as the Redskins, back in 1999. And his name has been covered in controversy ever since. Now, a new bombshell report by the Washington Post, the latest in his ongoing saga. Several NFL team owners speaking anonymously want him out, saying, quote, he needs to sell. Some of us need to go to him and tell him he needs to sell. I think there will be a movement. The same owner said, quote, we need to get 24 votes. To oust Snyder, it will take 24 of the 32 owners to force Snyder to sell the team, and he will likely not go quietly. Uh, today's a big day. Snyder is currently under a congressional investigation facing allegations of sexual harassment and bullying from commander employees, along with accusations of hiding millions in ticket sales. Earlier this year, Snyder famously avoided a congressional subpoena by spending time in international waters on his yacht, before later appearing before the House Oversight and Reform Committee over Zoom. Last year, the 57-year-old was fined $10 million by the NFL after he settled a lawsuit from a former commander's cheerleader. She accused Snyder of sexually assaulting her. Instead of suspending him, Snyder's wife, Tanya, was named CEO of the team and took over his day-to-day -day responsibilities. The next NFL owner's meeting is set for mid-October. Well, for more on the Snyder saga, I am joined now by the president of Life Flip Media Sports, Eric Mitchell. Eric, it's so great to see you. And, and I do want to start with the new report on um, Commander's owner Dan Snyder tonight, because those anonymous sources telling The Washington Post that he needs to, quote, sell the team. Eric, this is not the first time Snyder has found himself in hot water. Will this new drama finally put him in a position where he is forced to sell the team? I, I wish I knew the answer to this and I could say yes, because I've felt this way several other times that I've reported on this story. And I can tell you, this is the first time you've seen owners talking out loud. Well, well they're not, of course, not putting their names behind the quote, but their this information is leaking out. And we've seen this recently with the Phoenix Suns and Mercury owner being pushed out for misconduct. Snyder's been doing that. He's like the OG of misconduct when it comes to ownership in the NFL. He seems to be protected by Roger Goodell. Remember, this is the same organization behind John Gruden's firing that's turning into an ugly mess in a courtroom because Gruden was the only one out of 650,000 emails that they found anything negative on. And I'm sure the viewers at home will agree with me. That's hard to believe. The OG of misconduct. What a what a moniker. What a name. So, you know, it would take 24 of the 32 owners, really a 31, not counting Snyder, to force Snyder to sell that team. What are the chances that the owners will turn on one of their own in Snyder? <laughs> Highly unlikely because we saw how they all came together over Brian Flores situation and all the other situations. I don't see it happening. It's wishful thinking. We can sit here and talk about it. But at the end of the day, Dan Snyder seems to be untouchable mm. to get enough votes to get him removed. And they're on this. Look how good we're doing now, kick, because that's when they spoke to the committee on Capitol Hill just a few weeks ago. That's the attitude that the entire uh, commander organization took was, yes, we had these problems in the past, but look at us now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's talk about something more fun. Let's turn to college football today. Uh, the big three, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, all either won or are on stack to win. Clemson ranked fifth, won today against a ranked Wake Forest squad. And, and that game going into double overtime. So, Eric, is Clemson still the top dog in the ACC? Clemson is the top dog in the ACC. That was a shootout. That was a tough game. And just crazy to watch going into all those overtakes. But Wake Forest is a highly talented team. Let's not cut that team short. But these other games with Texas Tech upsetting uh, Texas down in Lubbock, that was a crazy game that came down to a field goal kick. In overtime, they rushed the field. And then you saw Oregon barely squeak out a win against an unranked but undefeated Washington State team. And let's not count out the Tennessee t Volunteers. They did beat the Gators in Tennessee in a game that a lot of people are saying Gators. Yeah. Uh, I, I do want to talk NFL for a moment, uh, if we have a second. The GOAT, sure. the GOAT, Tom Brady, says that he will play tomorrow against Green Bay despite that finger injury. Um, also, the undefeated Miami Dolphins taking on Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs, which, you know, which games are you most, are you most looking forward to right now, Eric? 
Well, I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't looking forward to the Brady versus Aaron Rodgers matchup tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Both teams are hurting at wide receiver. Lots of new players will be on the field, so it'll be interesting. The two old guys going at each other. It'll be a good battle. Aaron has a chip on his shoulder. The Bears, of course, uh, they need to get back on track after embarrassing themselves against Mr. Rodgers last Sunday night. And the two big games that I'm tracking, uh, I love this Dolphins game uh, going on down there. You do have the Bills mafias in town for that. And if you've watched social media in the last 20 hours, it's amazing how big the Bills mafia is down there. They're showing up despite all their injuries. Their fan base is amazing. But don't forget the Niners with Jimmy G, new, you know, the new old new quarterback, I guess we're going to go with, mm -hmm. versus Russell Wilson, who's played the 49ers a lot as a Seahawk, is now facing them mile high up there in Denver. That'll be a great Sunday night game. And the Monday night game, we've got the rivals of all rivals, the unexpected 2-0 and Giants facing the 1-1 one one Cowboys. Yeah. Cowboys look good on defense. This offense is a little squeaky. Let's see how that is. It's going to be great. That's a great rivalry. We have a lot of good football, but a lot of injuries, which kind of, as we get to week three, this is what we're used to seeing. So it's going to be fun to see how these teams adapt and overcome. Eric Mitchell, it is always a joy. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. You have a great evening. You too, Natasha.